Hello folks, this is Mike. Welcome to our vertical drawer series. Now in part one and part two of this series, we showed you how to bake your drawer box, how to install your full extension slides, and how to precision dock your drawer box into the cabinet. Now in today's video, in part three, we're going to show you a simple, uncomplicated method of taking your cabinet door and attaching it to the drawer box. And in effect, this will become your drawer front. And to make that happen, we're going to make a really cheap, inexpensive, simple shop made jig. Now, I use the same jig to fit this drawer. And as you can see, we have an on-the-money fit. And using your cabinet door as a drawer front, folks, it really adds a nice, elegant finishing touch to your project. And it's not just for vertical drawers. This, this procedure can be used on almost any drawer that has an applied front. So let's get started. But first, folks, we'd appreciate it if you would like our video. And be sure to click that subscribe button below. Well, folks, forgive me for sitting down on the job, but this is the only way that I get, get the whole drawer and me in the picture. What we want to do now is to measure for our jig. So, and what, the critical measurement we need to find right now is this distance here, the thickness of our jig, and the distance between these two ledges. So, you'll notice I put a bunch of blue tape around the drawer, and that's just the assist in the measurement process. First, I measured the length and the width of my door, the length and the width of my opening, and I subtracted one from the other. And in my case, that turned out to be a half inch even. So uh, that a half inch on each up and down gives me a quarter inch overlay all the way around the door. So what I did was I locked in a quarter inch on my, on my square, and I marked all the way around the door. Now I've got to mark top and bottom and side to side. So, the distance for our jig will be the distance from this mark, the quarter inch mark here, and the bottom edge of our drawer. And in my case, it comes out to three quarters of an inch. So, three quarters of an inch will be the thickness here of the jig. And we measure the distance from here to here to find the spacing for the ledges, the support ledges. There's one more critical measurement, and that would be the distance from your mark to the edge of your door box. When you position the door on the jig and try to set it where it needs to be, you'll need that measurement. So you may want to go ahead and lock that in on a combo square or some other measuring device and just set that aside for now. Now folks, I like to take my drawer out of the cabinet, take it to the shop and do all the work on it. I'm going to be drilling on this thing. Uh, I'm going to make a lot of sawdust, that, which gets in my carpet. <laughs> but you don't have to do that. You can do your work in the cabinet if you want to. Leave it in the cabinet, set your jig, clamp it in place, and you can do everything right here. It's, it's an option that's strictly up to you. So having said that, let's go make our jig and let's get started. So first let's machine our jig. First I'm going to cut the center slot for the bottom drawer slot. I set my saw hive to just slightly deeper than the slide itself, a little over a half inch in my case. Find the center of the jig and mark off an area that's a little bit wider than the bottom slide on your drawer. And now you can start cutting. I'm just going to nibble away at it until it's wide enough. I could do this with the dado blades or my router table, but by the time I got one of those things set up, I'm already going to be done doing it this way. I'm making the little support tabs out of a three quarter inch by one quarter inch piece of scrap. I'm going to cut them each two and a quarter inches long. Since I'm already at the table saw, I'm just going to cut them here. Now that we've cut our jig, we need to mark the location for the little quarter inch thick supports. You'll notice I've also cut some supports to go under the drawer to support it while we do our fitting. Center the jig with the slot face up. It needs to straddle the bottom slide piece. 
Put a mark at the drawer front edges and then we'll need to transfer these marks to the underside of the jig. I'm just going to use my combo square to make the transfer. Using your little piece of wood as a guide, make another mark on the jig toward the center of the drawer. When you have both sides laid out, it's time to glue it up. Put a little wood glue between the lines. Position your little wood pieces in place. One end should be flush with the back of the jig so you will have enough overhang at the front to set your door on. Go ahead and clamp and in about an hour your jig should be ready for use. While we're waiting for our jig to dry, we can go ahead and drill a quarter inch hole in each corner of our drawer front. This will allow us a little wiggle room for adjustments after we install the door. To avoid splintering, I've clamped a wood block in each corner. These holes will be much larger than a normal screw, so I'm going to use these. These are called washer head screws. The head will be wide enough to cover the hole. For my application, I'm going to use a number 8 by 1 and a quarter inch size screw. Just make sure they won't be long enough to drill all the way through the drawer box and through the door. Now I've attached some electrician's tape to my drill bit about one inch from the tip. When the tape reaches the drawer box, you know you've drilled deep enough to go all the way through the box. You could use a commercially made drill stop here instead, if you have one. Once your holes are drilled, you can remove your blocks and we'll get ready to install our jig. I'm removing the clamps and I'm going to position my drawer at the edge of my work table. Center the jig on the front of the drawer flush with the front edge and clamp it in place. If you don't have long clamps uh, like these, you can secure it with double sided tape or attach it with a brad nailer. Once the front is attached, you can simply take your hammer and just tap off the jig. Set your door on the ledge, making sure that your knob hole is on the correct side. Now here I've set my combo square to the correct depth, which is 3 quarter inches in my case, and I carefully slide the door back and forth until I get the correct fit, and then I clamp it into place. Be sure to check your fit at the top and the bottom on both sides of the door. An alternative method is to cut a scrap wood jig like this. I cut a 3 quarter inch deep notch in it and used it to fit my door. This actually worked better for me than the square. Once your door is securely clamped in place, we can go ahead and install our washer head screws in each corner. Try to center the screws in the hole so that we will have the maximum amount of adjustment room. Redock your drawer to make sure it will seat properly and adjust the screws as necessary. Now don't push it all the way in though. Since we haven't uh, put a knob on it yet, uh, we may not be able to get it back out of the cabinet. So, uh, if we installed the knob first, it would limit uh, the amount of adjustment room we had, so that's why we did that. Just use a thin shim like this one to keep your drawer from seating fully against the cabinet. The worry is that you might scratch your cabinet trying to get the drawer back out. If it does happen, you can use something like a clean plastic putty knife. That works real well. Or maybe your fingernails. If you've got a good fit, go ahead and clamp a block behind the knob hole and drill it all the way through. My knobs were supplied with both a 1 inch and a 1 and 3 quarter inch screw. If you don't have the right screw, they should be available to you at the local hardware store. I would take my knob with me and usually they'll have somebody that will help you fit it up. Since we're going through the drawer case and the drawer front, um, that comes out to about an inch and a half for me, so I needed the extra long screws. Now you can slide your drawer back in and you should be done. There is an alternate method for special circumstances and I actually had to use it. When I put the inch and a half screw all the way through, it came out right in the middle of one of the uh, shelf pin holes that I had to use. This is a quick fix, so I'm just going to leave the drawer box in the cabinet to make the modifications. Now I already have a hole drilled all the way through my door and through my drawer box. But if you haven't done that yet, here's what you can do. Drill through your door and into your drawer front, but just enough to make a little dimple or shallow depression. You can remove the door from the drawer and using your one inch screw, reattach your knob to the door and tighten it good. You can just set that aside for right now. 
I took a one half inch drill bit and centered it in the dimple and then I drilled a shallow hole about a quarter of an inch deep in the drawer front. This will allow the knob screw head to recess fully into the drawer front. Otherwise the door will bow some when we try to reattach it. This done, I reinstall the jig, reposition the door, and attach it to the drawer box. It's tempting just to go ahead and put it back up there and drill into the old screw holes we had without using the jig. But since we designed a little bit of wiggle room into to the, into the process, we might just not have a good fit when we do that. When the screws are tightened, I remove the jig and push it into the cabinet. And look, I've got a perfect fit. So this is a shop cabinet with a fully inset door. Now that means the front surface of the door is flush with the front surface of the cabinet. There is no overlap of any kind. And you could use the same jig we used earlier in this video to fit this door. You would just need to modify it. The same procedures I would apply and it would have the same success rate. However, I would like to show you an alternative method that has the virtue of being quick. We would just cut some shims and use some double-sided tape to make that happen. However, the downside to this method is that once the door contacts the tape on the front of the drawer, it is there. There is no adjustability. So if you need to reposition it, you will have to pry it off the front of the cabinet and start over again. What's needed to say is a royal thing. So before we start the fitting process, make sure that you've drilled your one quarter inch mounting holes in each corner of your drawer front. Next, we need to determine how much space to leave around the door. Uh, the easy way to do that is just set your door in the recess and pull it tight to one side. Then I'm going to take a measuring stick or a measuring tape and I'm going to measure this distance and this distance. And because I miscut the door, <laughs> I've got 3 8 inch at the top and 1 quarter inch at the side. Since this is a shop cabinet uh, and yours truly cut it wrong, I just decided to go with it. Okay. Uh, but anyway, what we have to do now with those measurements, I've got 3 8 and a quarter. I'm simply going to divide each by 2, which will give me 1 8 inch for each side, 3 16 top and bottom. And those will be the thicknesses of our shims. I need to cut two 1 8 inch shims and two 3 16 inch shims. I'm going to make the bottom shims about a foot long for stability. Cut the shims to the desired length and now we can do our dry fit. Make sure to pull your door tight against the side shims and check your spacings all around the door. Next I'm cutting and installing the double sided tape. We're using the foam type tape which is about one inch wide and about an eighth inch thick. I've tried the thin double sided tape but uh, I have much better luck with the foam tape for drawer fronts. Don't worry about the thickness of the tape. When you run in your screws it's going to compress the tape and you won't notice much of a gap behind your drawer front. Once you get your tape on the door you'll need to remove the paper cover. Now getting it started though can be its own challenge. I think I need better fingernails. When you install the door, position it on your bottom shims without allowing it to touch the tape. Insert your side shims, press firmly sideways against the shims, and then press the door firmly against the drawer. Here I'm using a large wood screw to pull the drawer out of the cabinet. Position your washer head screws in the center of your holes and then run them in tightly. Clamp a wood block behind your knob hole or holes and drill through the drawer box. Use the appropriate size screws and install your knob. Now check your fit. Mine turned out pretty darn good. Well we've demonstrated two different methods for converting your cabinet door to a drawer front. In one method we use this jig which is just a shop made scrap wood jig second method, we just use foam sided tape. In either method, if you follow the directions and you're careful, you should be able to install that cabinet door on your drawer front first time on the money. So if I haven't answered all your questions, folks, uh, be sure to leave me a comment. I'd love to help make your project successful. 
Also, uh, be sure to like our video and be sure to click that subscribe button below. Uh, we've got more great videos coming. Now, in my next upcoming video, I'm going to do a review of this saw. This is the DeWalt 12-inch sliding miter saw. And I'm going to give you the pros and cons of this saw, and I'm going to give you a, well, well a brutally honest review. So be sure to watch for that. And until next time, folks, thanks for watching.